Welcome back to Uncut and Unfiltered. Today we are in Springbank's Washback Bar. It is a seriously cool episode today. Joined, as always, by Ian Poshkoch. Hi, guys. Arian from Drink Whiskey with Friends is also here. And most importantly, we are joined by Nicole. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us. You're part of the Springbank team here. Tell us a little bit about what you've got lined up for us today. Yeah, so welcome to Springbank. Um, Today we have, as part of your Eat, Sleep, Dram, Repeat kind of experience, um, the new and forthcoming tasting, uh, which is normally hosted by someone from the sales team. Um, This is my first time actually to host this, so it's a pleasure to be here. Lovely. Um, And yeah, so we've got a range of whiskies from both Springbank Distillery, which include Hazelburn, Springbank and Long Row, the three brands made there, as well as a couple of pre-release samples from Kilcarran, uh, which is produced the single malt produced at Glengyle distillery or sister distillery fantastic looks like some really interesting stuff i can mm. already see the springbank px which is something you just yeah. recently won in the ballot there yep. Ian. Mm. excited yeah. to try it i bet yeah we were well, just saying I've... that just rolled out the door today so it'll be on the way to you probably be home before you are uh-huh. to be honest yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have to ring up a neighbor and be like don't drink it no, absolutely <laughs> it's mine Fantastic. Uh, Six wonderful drams, a taste of what's to come. Yeah, so PX, as you know, was released. That was um, a recent release, so came out in November, and uh, we'll go into it in a bit more detail and the whole sort of idea behind the Sherry series once we get to that. But um, the rest, all of which, apart from the Long Row Red, also released back in November, um, the rest are all pre-release samples. So you'll see from the lineup as well there that Quite a few of them are in sort of naked sample bottles with the stickers on the front. Uh, the only one we've got a dressed bottle of is the Sherry Wood, um, which actually is still, I believe, to be bottled. Um, so, yeah, you're among the very first people to try these. Um, the Fantastic. sales team have tasted them, obviously, to get our tasting notes and nice. everything together. Uh, we did them recently in here, actually, with our, um, our bar and shop team um, to get them involved as well. So that was pretty good fun. Love a good tasting note session. Mm. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Nothing better. Oh. Good excuse to drink a good yeah. good bit of whiskey, right? I love the these. I love these Hazelburn Sherry Wood series as well. Like you know, there's been really consistently good over mm. the last few mm-hmm. years. It's um, always yeah. So if you want to actually kick off with the Sherry Wood, why not? Let's dig in. Let's do it. Um, the first one is Hazelburn Sherry Wood. Hazelburn is the non-peated range, triple distilled at Springbank Distillery. Um, it was first introduced by Frank McCarty in 1997, I believe. So that was when it was first made. Um, and Frank McCarty, who was the previous director of production here at Springbank, had, throughout his career, worked at a lot of distilleries, including Bushmills, I believe, in Ireland. So um, with Springbank having three stills in place, and it always has done, I remember thinking when I joined here, like, when did they put another still in? But it's always been that way. Um, fairly unusual for a Scotch whisky distillery. One wash still, two spirit stills. Um, and they are used to make Springbank, the original Springbank single malt, because there's a partial third distillation to make that. But Mr. McCarty initiated a full triple distillation for Hazelburn, which results in a sort of lighter, more elegant, creamy, smooth spirit. Now, I know you guys actually tried new make today, is that right? Yeah. Yes. During your, your tour, and did, did you try a variety of new makes, like Hazelburn versus no, Springbank? No, we just tried just Springbank. Spring just yeah. Springbank, yeah. which, yeah, yeah. For Cleric, I was blown away mm, by that. Yeah, that was really super. Good. Kilcarran's spirit's really good as well, actually. I've heard from a couple of the Stillman, um, one of them in particular, he's been here for over 30 years, he's always like, oh yes, the Kilcarran spirit's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Bit of a love affair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not that he's a big drinker, I don't think he drinks a lot of, of whiskey and whatnot, but he's he's a fan of the spirit, it's good. <laughs> this is absolutely sublime. Yeah. I'm norm- I was saying yesterday, of the um, of the four, Hazelburn isn't something I would normally go to. Yeah. Just for a Campbelltown malt, mm-hmm. it's not quite what I expect. Like you say, it is almost more of an Irish yeah, style. Yeah, more refined. Very um, refined, finer, exactly, kind of, yeah. Um, but this is so good it sits really nicely mm. that's that's a, I, I think you know you've got the you've got the very refined bourbon styles but for me yeah. I think sherry is where like mm. I'm sitting there being like alright great get me all the hazelburn I can um, like I know you, you said you weren't uh, as much of a fan but Aaron and I we love the 2021 the, okay. the virtual tasting the 15 year old mm. um and again, I was just saying last night that the 21-year-old, I managed to get a bottle know, of that yeah. as well. I must admit there was something, I'm the same, I wouldn't have 
ordinarily have gone for the hazel burns, I would probably be more um, likely to reach for a long row, honestly. Like, right, I really yeah. like the PT drams. But yeah. in the last sort of year or two, uh, particularly in last, the last year, I would say I've been more kind of um, appreciating the hazel Warming burns, definitely. Bit, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Fair yeah. enough. Well, listen, with your Isla roots, no doubt you like a good PT That's dram. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. So when is this going to be released? For everyone watching yeah. at home thinking this When's sounds this really delicious. When's this podcast going live? Because yeah. I don't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it will be very soon. Okay. Um, the, we tend to do like sort of, um, there'll be four releases throughout the year, so you get limited editions, uh, sort of freshen up of... Um, like getting stock out there of the core range as well um but yeah four times each year um we are not too specific with launch dates anymore um but within the next sort of few weeks um you'll find that um society members kind of get a heads up um so i'm sure you guys right. will be some of the first to know um Fantastic. if uh, if it's hitting the shelves yeah, and then it sort of also just rolls out, so you can't really say it's going to be here on this day, like we start dispatching and then it'll sort of start appearing in shops in the UK, some parts of Europe and then rest of the world, as and when, subject to transit times. It takes a bit longer to get, um, usually to America and some Asian countries, you might see it in the next few months For sure. after we release it here. Okay, so stay tuned guys. Mm. I have to say... This is up there with some of my favourite Hazelburn I've yeah. ever tasted. Yeah. And I've just noticed your, I was just thinking, it's actually got a real depth of kind of salinity through it. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. The sea that salt is the first thing. Initially, your, yeah. when, we, when we first tried it um, all together in here, actually, we were all kind of sitting and it's nice to just, it's quite casual. We do these tasting sessions for every new release that we do. Right. Um, and we just pour it, kind of all sit around. Someone takes the notes and uh, we kind of shout things out. Um, and yeah, one of the first initial um, things that was noted in the nose even um, with this one is that sort of real sea salty kind of briny note that comes to the fore yeah. in the beginning and then sort of carries through um, mm. but yeah noticeable from the off really there. really but like gives it such depth and again not saying I would necessarily I don't know you guys obviously a bit more into the hazelburn not saying I would yeah. think of synonymously so much, with yeah. hazelburn but quite often through all of our sort of spring bank editions we do get that sort of salinity the brininess from the just the coastal kind yeah. of influence um and uh, yeah so it does come through not always but quite often we'll find that um whether it's daft things like lobster creels or um you know sea spray or this or that that kind of sometimes people are like oh what does that how do you know what that tastes like and it's not really that anyone's tasted these things it's, it's just it's a ah, well. it's a nostalgia it's you know when you live in a coastal town like this but it's really wild and wet and windy and um, those familiar smells and senses are kind of just um, sort of lit up, if you like. Absolutely, when you they taste all the mingle with each other, mm, don't they? Yeah. Definitely, yeah. So everyone's what they, they they sort of get from a whiskey is kind of really sort of unique to them because we all have different experiences and walks of life and all the rest of it, Absolutely. different parts of the world. Um, but this is what's lovely, especially talking to somebody like yourself who lives in the area because you've got that much more experience around the area, it really brings you to mm -hmm. Campbelltown. I know we're yeah. in Campbelltown, but now, like, mm -hmm. if I hopefully get a bottle of this, uh, I'll be thinking of Campbelltown. Yeah, that's yeah, it. all mm -hmm. of that, and I think that that sort of... Sort of transports you. It really mm -hmm. does, and, and that's something so spe well. special about whiskey. I don't think there's many other things that mm -hmm. can do that in the same way as whiskey. Mm -hmm. Not for me, anyway, yeah. do you know what I mean? And I've heard a lot of people actually talking, or one or two recently, in the, about this sense of place and... Um, Whatnot. And I think that's really kind of what whiskey does. It's a, a sense of the place, you know, and, and sort of the roots and where, where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, the Hazelburn Sherry Wood is an annual limited release. Okay. Like everything at Springbank now, um, 9,000 bottles, a kind of fairly limited. Uh, and that's for the whole, world, yeah. <laughs> the whole world. So it's not just, you know, 9,000 bottles for the UK or anything like that. Um, this annual release is always really um, matured fully in sherry oloroso casks. That's our kind of standard, uh, when we talk about sherry maturation, it's oloroso. Um, but the PX, which we're going to go on to later, is a kind of deviation and a more experimental range, kind mm. of going away from oloroso to okay. see how things uh, mature in other types of sherry cask as well. And are but you yes. sourcing casks from a particular bodega? Is there a specific... Uh, yeah, not a bodega as such, but um, like most single malt or scotch whiskies in general um 
the casks used to make sherry matured whiskies are not from bodegas um, right. as often. It's there's a whole industry in, in Spain now to yeah. make seasoned sherry casks. casks and season them for specifically the Scotch whisky That's industry. That's a seasoned cask. Seasoned cask, That's yeah. That's an incredible seasoned cask. Yeah. You rarely find them that good, in my experiences mm. anyway, I don't know. We've had this conversation a couple of times before. For sure. Old school sherry. Proper. It's not yeah. the kind of prune, juicy, kind of very raisinous, like kind of fruit. You've got the earthiness. I think the salt mm-hmm. works well so yeah. well with it as mm-hmm. before. It's got a kind of dunnagey note to That's it as it. well. Um, yeah, really good cask. So we do, we do work, as you say, with um, one particular supplier. That's Miguel Martin in okay. Hereth. Uh, so Finlay Ross, who's our director of production, he's been um, at least once to visit Miguel and, um, and sort of visit uh, the plant and sort of talk about it. And he works very closely with him. Um, to source the casks and to get exactly what we need for, for he's spring such a big part and he's yeah he's got a product, wealth of knowledge I think he's yeah. um, obviously very experienced in what he does for, for sure. and works with numerous Scotch whisky distilleries um, but yeah seasoned casks specifically for the Scotch whisky industry having spoken to Finlay we did um, together an online whisky tasting for the festival when it was online during the Covid years um, I had the pleasure of hosting one with Finlay for kind of a kickstarter or an introduction to the upcoming sherry series right. um, which the PX features in and um, he was kind of explaining how you wouldn't perhaps want to use casks from a bodega like there's rarely casks available from true bodegas because they're in a Solera system yep. um, the casks are never really obsolete you know as long as they're fit and healthy and within that Solera system they don't really leave it mm. um, and also within the sherry making process uh, it's not so much like the whiskey industry where we want the activity from the wood to mature the whiskey. The the casks are used for a long, long period of time, so the wood's more kind of not exhausted, but it's inert, if you like. It's more of a vessel mm. um, to house and mature the, the sherries. So with us getting from the, the seasoned sherry cask sort of industry, you've got that wood activity, which is really important for as maturing whiskey in Scotland. Mm. And do you get the, the casks, are they shipped over whole? Or yeah, the they way? are. So yeah. we have, oh, there's a funny story actually with that. Um, so, the yeah, they come over, they are shipped um, from Spain here. Uh, the lorry comes in and they roll them off and take them into the yard. Um, and I was hearing a story with, as I say, the same uh, gentleman, we've got a man that's been here for over 30 years at Springbank. And uh, I was told that when... The driver came in from Spain, he doesn't speak English, um, but he used to always shout, hola, hola, and, you know, still me shouting, hola, yep. And then he went into the office one day to tell Finlay, hola's here with the casks. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, Very hola, good. hola, ay, hola. <laughs> You didn't realise that Ola is like, hello in That's Spanish. <laughs> Very good. Amazing. So Ola is here with the casks, when we <laughs> Cast crack. Very good. <laughs> I don't know how you guys are finding this, Hazelburn. I've actually moved on sneakily to the local barley and I'm now dual wielding and it's fantastic. Mm. Uh, Mm. No, Uh, I didn't say say anything. Hazelburn though, would you, okay, as a big fan of Hazelburn, Arian? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm impressed by the thickness of it because obviously it's it's known as a lighter spirit. For sure. And I think some of the younger Hazelburns sometimes put people off Mm. because they're they're not as thick as as some of the drams that we're, you know, a lot of people love. With that sherry and Influence, making it a bit more rich and syrupy and sort of like yeah that's maybe why i love it so mm. much yeah mm-hmm. and it's that time it's not a perfectly clean cast but it's not too dirty either. Mm-hmm. it's just a, a really good balance um so yeah local barley it has kind of earned itself a kind of hardcore following um over the years, um, I think from the sort of 1965 and 66 casks being sort of really kind of popular and now in yep. kind of earned itself this kind of credential. The local barley range that we do now also has kind of kept up that. Um, there were supposed to be a series of five editions released, but with the popularity of it, we continue to make it every year and there's no sort of end in sight at the moment. Right, um, good. Yeah, so that's good, good news. Um, the local barley is grown, obviously. We do um, 
grow, a farmer in the area grows the barley for us on our behalf each year. Um, over the last few years, we've, we've used one particular farm, but uh, the additions that we're still seeing released today come from a variety of farms. Over the last two or three years, it's been one called Glen Craig's, which is just about a mile, mile and a half outside of the town itself. Um, and vari different varieties of barley as well um, would normally be grown. So this particular one... Um, I think Bill, it was Bill Gravia, perhaps. I'll need to double check. Um, but yeah, obviously it's not out there yet. Um, it's going to be about 55, I think 55.1% strength. I was just about to ask, yeah. yeah. It's very, it's bulgy. Mm. It's big. And 100% bourbon matured. So we were saying earlier how um, there was that one-off sherry-influenced full sherry maturation, which was a kind of deviation from the mm. usual kind of bourbon predominant. Right. Um, I p particularly like the bourbons these days, um, and I think most people who like the local barley like to see that kind of naked, kind of spirit-driven kind of um, whiskey, um, and so we'll probably be quite happy to see another bourbon come out. Absolutely. Um, I noticed this is an 11-year-old as well. Are they not normally years. 10? There have been a variety, so we've had right, okay. 16, which again is one that everybody kind of really raves about um, from this more recent range. Um, we've had 10s, I think for the last three years. Right, okay. And there's also been nine-year-olds as well. Uh, so between nine and 11, and then there was the one 16. Right, okay. um, but yeah, there's no hard and fast um, kind of age-stated... So I was going to ask, what is it that you're looking for from this release then? Obviously, yeah. other than the fact that it is a Campbelltown whiskey through and through, mm. what is it that you want people to have in the glass? So I think that um, there's a certain... there's a different kind of flavour with this one as well. I feel like the this edition has more of a sort of multi cereal driven kind of characteristic which really transports you and kind of gives you that flavour profile that you can really sense the barley. Um, so it's quite a um, quite different if you like overall um, to the others. There's subtle differences from one to the next I think with using different varieties of barley different farms as well, subtle differences, but um, that's quite nice and I think something that they focus on a little bit to try and give drinkers an experience where from one year to the next they can compare and contrast and discuss For and sure. whatnot. There's lots of distilleries, not lots, there's a few who really focus on this kind of terroir kind mm. of mm. Um, influence on whiskey and that's a hot topic I think now. Definitely. Um, the influence does it have a, any bearing on the whiskey at all some people say absolutely not some people say yes it does um, I think from our standpoint um, that we do think it has some influence there's a, a lot of studying going on and other distilleries really focusing and taking it to a sort of scientific level which is great and is probably going to open that debate right up and kind of get some answers in the coming years but Springbank's not like that we're not high tech we're not scientific it's all about hopefully opening the bottles drinking them, sharing, discussing, comparing, contrasting. Yep. Um, and so I think that's what this is all about. It's like our kind of barley-focused um, edition, but in a way that we can all just share and talk about it. I love that, that you're not trying to be over-scientific or, you know, tr trying to be overly, you know, it's just let's let it do what yeah, it does uh -huh. and let's all enjoy it and let's mm. see what we think. Mm -hmm. you know? I love that. It's really, um, yeah, here it's kind of, um, there's not a whole lot of kind of marketing and like you know what's going to sell and what you know what's really interesting and let's be like cool and trendy and like the new thing. With Springbank, it really is just stripped back to making keeping things traditional, um, being true to whiskey making and how it's always been done here, and really the absolute focus is always just on making the best possible spirit. Um, with complete control over every part of the process as possible. So it's very spirit and quality focused at every stage. Um, Which I think it's very, very clear from the following that you've now sort of gathered it's one of the highest quality spirits out mm. there, is right? You know, yeah. Very few taking challenges, time, I think. Like really just taking time, not rushing, not trying to increase like production, kind of like um, change the fabric of the distillery overall. It's just just really doing what's always been done here and, and refusing to, to change. That's um, what we noticed on the tour. I was saying, you know, Finley was showing us around and, uh, 
you know, the uh, one of the one of the measuring computers, as he calls them, uh, is in gallons whilst everything else is in yeah, meters. Uh -huh. no, we're, not, we're not changing that. No, this is the way it was. This is the way it'll always be. Yeah. You don't want to make things easier for yourself. Do you? you know, it's about making it really good quality. Uh -huh. I love that. I, you know, very few places, I think, yeah. would hold on to that sort of heritage it. in that way. And because we are still, you know, it's independently owned since 1828, Mr. Wright is, um, you know, the chairman of the distillery. He inherited it from... The previous generation he's the fifth generation of the family um and i think that integrity and that sort of ownership and responsibility i suppose as being part of that family is just to continue what's always been done sure. so because we still have that kind of autonomy um we can we can continue you that. don't have a conglomerate breathing down your no, neck more it. money no, yeah, yeah no definitely not no. definitely not and you know what again mm. it shows through it mm. really really does um, it's anything, fascinating to find out it's, it is you're looking at about 30 to 40 percent of their capacity produced per year mm -hmm. and it's, it's not a massive capacity either no yeah. no correct mm -hmm. and yet it still challenges some of the biggest you know titans of, you know the mccallan putting out 15 million liters per annum and still springbank can challenge that very comfortably mm. exactly what you're saying it's yeah. all down to the quality, quality over quantity for love sure it. love it <laughs> I Which mean, might it, be it'd be nice if there was a bit more. Yeah, I'm sure everyone at home is thinking it'd be lovely if we could have a bit more. It might but be, there might be a lot of people sitting thinking, oh, it's absolutely stupid. Like, I did not make more. <laughs> but really, like, you know, if we did, I think we would also lose that kind of, um, kind of what people do appreciate and love the distillery for. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, reluctance to change and make and change the distillery, the, the feel, the character, the traditions, um, would in some way probably damage the what for we've sure. already what for everybody sure. over the generations has worked towards. Yeah. Um, and it's really exciting times actually now um, because we are approaching fast approaching our two hundred year anniversary. So yeah, it's all about, you know, getting here the generations before us and, and maintaining what we've done. Obviously things have been okay until now, so uh, not changing so that it hopefully lasts another couple of hundred years. Oh, yes to that, absolutely. Sure, well, yeah. I'm really enjoying that. It's very, um, I'm getting, I know if you mangoes, did, papayas, yeah. I'm getting pineapples. Uh -huh. yeah. Pineapples and passion fruits. And yeah, I definitely get sure. that maltiness that uh -huh. you said. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm sure we did as well. Like the kind of, there was pineapple kind of coconut characteristics coming through as well. A kind of mineral note which comes through in a lot of our whiskies too. Right. Um, thankfully, this edition, in past years, there's been maybe around the sort of nine, ten thousand 10,000 bottles. But okay. last year and this year again, we'll have 15,000. So a wee bit more to go around. Nice. Happy days. Very yeah. good. Very good. Ian, are you itching to get on to dram number three now? See what it's like? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried it already? I have actually yeah, tried it before. Yeah. So oh, I've right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't worry. I right. thought you maybe had, yeah. So, um, so yeah, this is the PX, uh, the Springbank PX. All of these whisky, so obviously Hazelburn, we said, was non-peated. Local barley and Springbank, these are both, obviously, 100%, everything at Springbank is malted in-house, so... Um, every grain of barley used to make our whiskies will be malted on our, on our floors and dried in the kiln. We tweak the kilning process, we tweak the distillation process as well to make the different brands. Um, but spring banks are generally nice and lightly peated, between 10 and 15 ppm, six hours peat smoke, then dried off. So nice and light. And the spring bank PX is the same, same as the local barley it should be. Um, so yeah, this is part of a, a newly launched Sherry series. So we were saying at the beginning about how the distillery, generally the control dram would be all or also matured. Whereas with the PX, this is the first in a five part series which will utilise different types of Sherry cask. Um, so from Finlay, I uh, worked with Miguel to get five different uh, Sherry type casks. From PX, we've got Palo Cortado, Amontillado, Manzanilla, Fino. Um, from very sort of rich, fruity, syrupy, kind of bold PX, right down to the, the sort of lighter style sherries like the Manzanillas and the Fino. Yeah. And uh, I think actually when I was talking to Finley about it, we, we, he's done some kind of training with us all to sort of, talk about and present his visit to Spain and um, the different types of sherry, how they're made um, and whatnot to give us a bit more understanding on the different types and the flavours that might come from those casks um, and tasting them as well. So they took little sample bottles from, you know, residual spirit that was in these casks 
bottled that and we all tried them. So it's not exactly a true representation of the sherries, yeah. mm. but it's a representation of the casks that we are, we're, we're filling our, our whiskey into or our spirit into. Um, and so uh, Miguel was instrumental in that. Um, I think when Finlay first asked about getting sort of fino casks, he was kind of like, oh, that's not what you want, you know. Um, he was a wee bit reluctant, didn't think that would give our whiskies what, what he thinks we are looking for. Okay. Um, and so when I think he explained, you know, the idea behind it, it's experimental. We want to see how these casks relate and kind of um, with our spirit. Um, so total deviation from Oloroso, which we all know works very well mm. to mature uh, whiskey, but using a variety of different types from richer, which are going to have, it's going to implement, we've implemented a kind of staggered maturation for them. So with your PX, it's the first to be released because these additions over five years, they'll all be released as 10 year old whiskies at 55% strength, or that's the plan. <laughs> um, and the PX is the first because it's going to have the shortest time to have a sort of impact on the spirit. So it's been three, sorry, seven years in bourbon casks and then three years in Pedro Emenez casks. The next is going to be a Palo Cortado, slightly lighter type of sherry, um, not quite as rich and viscous as a PX. And so it's got an extra year in the Palo Cortado cask. So we'll be ready in the next year okay. to be released. So six years bourbon, four years Palo Cortado, and kind of staggered right down to... And do you always do it with the bourbon maturation end. first? Yeah, Sherry all bourbon. Second? Yeah, yeah okay. that's it. Any reason why? Um, I just think so that it works with the staggered maturation so that we have... Um, we obviously have bourbon maturing casks anyway, um, and then to allow um, for something to be ready. Um, each year, right. hopefully anyway. Okay. Um, obviously though, he'll have to keep an eye on them, taste them from time to time. You know, if it's going like peat tong and it's like, oh no, that needs to be bottled, they'll act, I'm sure. For sure. Um, but the idea is to have this kind of um, method in place yeah. so that we have something available each year at 10 years old. Um, to be bottled, so and then the, we can compare. So the roadmap might be changed. It's not. So not, there's not a kind of dogged. Yeah. We're going to do this regardless. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't think so. I think you know. Obviously, as we said before, the most important thing to us is releasing whiskies that are super good quality, the best yeah. that we can make. And so, if um, I'm sure Finley was to be trying them and think mm, this is probably ready about now, they'd maybe start to think about what we're going to do to to make sure this is released at its optimum. We've got mm -hmm. so much mi mixed feedback on this one. Um, mm. And I'm really excited for people to start receiving their bottles of this yeah. because I feel like we're going to get lots of different opinions. Well, I don't see how you can have any other opinion than this is like spring bank, 10 year old at its best. So this that, is fucking it's, delicious. It's, it's, it's interesting. I know a couple of people. I know one person who literally said it was awful what and there was mm -hmm. no spring bank in they're it drinking whatsoever. The same thing as me, and i don't think they're drinking the same thing because i had it when it was still nine year old at mm -hmm. the festival mm -hmm. the pre-release yeah, yeah. i've had it i think twice as a once at a dram at a bar once as part of a tasting with mm -hmm. my whiskey club so you know this is fourth time i've been lucky enough to have it and i've got yeah. a bottle on the way which is which is fantastic i absolutely love it because i think you can absolutely taste that it's a spring bank definitely, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. it's like unquestionably yeah. spring bank Mm -hmm. I don't understand what's going on there. I'm well, very that, surprised that there are this mixed is, feelings. This is this. the thing, though, with uh, whiskey, you know, and it's it's great that we can talk about it and discuss it, and everyone has likes and dislikes, and, you know, everyone's views and points are valid and to themselves, you know, yeah. but... Um, Again, you get people who just really don't... When I've been out and about, you just get people that don't like sherry maturations and they'll kind of write everything off that's been in a, in a sherry cask right. and all the rest of it. Likewise, you get the flip side, people who love sherry and like that is their favourite, you know. So it's great. That's You know, everyone has different likes and dislikes. And um, If anyone's got a bottle of this and they don't like it, you can send it my <laughs> way, okay? I love it. <laughs> there were... When we were trying it at first, I must admit, there were certain... Um, qualities about it that came to the fore for us so we were trying it kind of like oh yeah it's unmistakably sherry it's got all the lovely sort of dates mm -hmm. set up and um, the rich kind of flavors it's got a kind of unusual kind of sometimes like a a cherry menthol mm -hmm. or a kind of unusual note that comes through um the spiciness as well but also there was this kind of apparent drying kind of quality like the astringent. tannins yeah, yeah, yeah. astringent which tannic. typically is not a um, 
a quality we would like to highlight. Okay. Um, and we were kind of like, we've actually said in like the finish, the taste, the the palette, you know, these tanning qualities are, are there. Um, mm. And we were like, oh, you know, should we take that out? It's maybe not something we want to draw attention to. But we decided, you know what, this is an experimental range. Right. Um, it's a first for us. If that's what it is, you know, at three years in the PX casks, then that's what it is, you know. And we just put it in because um, this is all kind of just informing us for perhaps using PX casks in the future. Maybe it would be like, oh, well, maybe a wee bit less or, you know. So, yeah, something that we thought as a sales team maybe wasn't the best to draw attention to, but it's there. It's undeniable. So I love that. We just kept it I really it in. do love that. And I've got that kind of as well, aside from the astringence on the nose, talking about the mineral minerality mm. in the local yeah. barley, which I didn't really get, to be honest. I get that alluvial, Matt Mackay, mm. you know, that kind of beachfront alluvialness. Mm. Uh, and I also have a very much kind of like that damp dunnage. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. which you comes through I mean? in quite obviously it's, a lot of You've just transported me back to warehouse number three. Yeah. Mm. Might, and I think might that's live the thing. in there, to be honest. Yeah, like, that's the thing. When you drink a Springbank, um, like, again, about that sense of place, that damp dunnage kind of... Um, people call it the Springbank funk, I think, mm. um, whether or not you like that. But there's this kind of musty, quite often, like yeah. we say, oh, it's like library books or this or that, you know. Um, and that is something that you do very much get in Springbank whiskies. And um, I think in certain parts of the warehouse, especially in a Dunnage warehouse, that's yeah. where you're going to get these things. Um, Finley says you get these areas where you get lots of that. And so if you're making a spring bank and you need a wee bit more of that kind of characteristic injected in, he knows where to kind of get the casks for that. Fantastic. Um, I love that. I so, love that. so yeah, it's definitely something that comes through in a but lot But what of you don't have on it, which is something I, it kind of goes a bit far that way sometimes for me, is that kind of mushroomy note. Mm. But it doesn't have that at all. Yeah. It's really, it's damp, it's kind of funky. It's got that kind of, yeah, beachfront alluvial, but it, oh, mm. it, it's, I don't know how anyone doesn't like this. I'm it's it's, 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 it's really great. complex. I get quite a kind of um, like industrial kind of garagey kind of mm. note to it, a bit mm -hmm. of like engine oil, right. like, you know, like dirty kind of rags and overalls kind yeah. of too as well, which is great, you mm -hmm. know. Um, it's, it's, it's really interesting that people, because what you're talking about, the fact that it's, tannic it's got a little element of that in it and i would expect people to pick up on that and say oh i don't like it because of this yeah and i've never but they've so not said I've that not heard it no yeah exactly. uh, me neither and they've, they've mm. more focused on the fact that the sherry's maybe taking it away from the spring bank quality and i yeah. think mm -hmm. that's what you were saying before about you know maybe they're leaning more towards bourbon when mm -hmm. we we're discussing it yeah. um, spring banks but i think that is not the case in this mm -hmm. in this you can definitely tell that it is mm -hmm. spring bank it's about and getting that balance between allowing the spirit to shine through and the sort of character and the dna of the distillery but marrying quite nicely with with the maturation so yeah and as we say this is the first time i think it might actually be the first time there's some of the casks we're about to use anyway that we've never ever used before so it will be um mm. the first um, but yeah, again, it's just about finding how these casks relate with our spirit and perhaps in the future it informs us to make or to define it to suit, you know, Finley might take away from it and, and sort of change what he does the next time to make another addition in the future, which I'm sure is what this is, a fact-finding experiment. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Well, we found out a lot. What I find so fascinating, I'm just comparing the local barley and the PX now. I don't know if anyone else recently, I'm sure you guys here at Springbank have read all about the proposals from the Scottish government with regards to the marketing of mm -hmm. alcohol, which is just yeah. offensive. Mm. I mean, and the thing that I find so funny, what they said in there is drinks within the same categories are ultimately different renditions of the same thing, mm. right? Which is a ludicrous statement. But what I love about this, these are both Springbanks from the, you know, not even two different brands from the same distillery. Yeah. Both spring banks, same distillery. Only a year apart. They are so, so different. different. Yeah, the idea uh -huh. that these are renditions of the same thing is mm -hmm. laughable. Like, these are two completely different things. Mm -hmm. yep. It's amazing, you know? Yeah. It really is wonderful that you can get that just by the local barley, the type of cask, you know, magic. It mm -hmm. really is magic. Yeah. Yeah. Hand deliver Nicola Sturgeon a bottle of each on the way home. <laughs> right, yeah, we need to have a word. We're stopping in, Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't deserve those bottles. I'll keep them. No. Mm. Here we go. I'm so excited for this next one, though, I have to say. I've been. Kilkerran? I'm, I'm, 
Yeah. I'm very excited for this one. Kilcarran is a winner always, right? Yeah. So Kilcarran, um, obviously now we're moving from, and we're going to come back to Springbank because at the end we've got a long row, which is <laughs> the most heavily peated range produced there. But from for the next couple of drams, heading to our sister distillery, Glen Gyle, which uh, is just about a couple of hundred yards from us here, where we're sat. Um, and Glen Gyle Distillery is, is it's a distillery that's got a kind of rich, vibrant history. It has kind of existed in parallel to really kind of show the highs and lows of Campbelltown's whiskey kind of industry as a whole. Um, you know, it was opened when it was booming here in Campbelltown. It sadly closed um, when everything kind of crashed. Um, and just as things were starting to pick up again, um, it was, I believe, the first distillery to open in the millennium, in the new millennium. So in 2004, re-established, and we know from then on we've had lots of distilleries opening up in Scotland and, and beyond um, due to the rise in demand for Scotch whisky. Um, so, yeah, Kilkerran is the single malt produced at Glengyle Distillery. There were 70, I think it was 74 years of, um, around that anyway, for Glengyle to be closed. So its history is kind of intertwined. We try and keep these two brands quite separate because we don't want Kilkerran, which are great single malt whiskies, to sort of be in the shadow of Springbank, um, which has existed for almost 200 years. Um, but the stories are intertwined. There's no getting away from that. So as we know, Springbank's independently owned. It has been since 1828. It was established by Archibald Mitchell. He passed the distillery on to his two sons who ran Springbank in partnership, John and William. They had a falling out. Um, and one of them, William Mitchell, left Springbank and was the founder of Glengyle Distillery in 1872. So that's how it came about initially. Um, and he ran the distillery until the 1920s, early 1920s. It was sold, but with the downturn in demand for Campbelltown's whiskies around then, it ceased production entirely in 1925 and was, although various attempts were made to reopen it as a distillery it never did um and it was, was it just other... mothballed or was it like yeah. taken apart so it was and... taken apart right. all the equipment was kind of i don't know where it would have gone dispersed the, wherever. The, yeah dispersed the the barrels the stock was all sold off at auction right yeah um and the buildings were used for a variety of other reasons uh, other purposes such as a rifle club's premises uh, right. in Campbelltown it was an agricultural farm supply store um, all of that though is quite important because it meant that the integrity of the buildings overall was relatively good mm. um, and so when um, in the early about the millennium Mr Wright was looking to open another distillery um, Glengyle's original buildings, which were part of his family sort of heritage, um, were in relatively good repair. He decided that would be a good spot to get it up and running. That was really important to Campbelltown as an, uh, overall because the Scotch Whiskey Association had called Campbelltown's, um, or, or actually I think it had not been included. They printed a map and they didn't include Campbelltown as a region. That was the catalyst for it. Um, and so... The argument was, with the Lowlands at the time having three working distilleries, all we have to do here is get one up and running, even if it's not all year round, which it still isn't. But it is a working distillery for three months of the year currently. Um, and that has solidified Campbelltown's place as a, um, or status as a whisky region in Scotland. So it's had a lot of um, importance to not just us, but to Campbelltown overall as a whisky place. And what I love about Kilcarran, and going back to kind of what I said about Hazelburn and why I maybe wouldn't go to Hazelburn, because I think Campbelltown, mm -hmm. and I think of Kilcarran flavours. Mm. To me, and I've said this so many times now the last few days, <laughs> you'll be bored of hearing me say it, it's such an undervalued whisky. Mm. Yep. I don't yeah. understand, you know, the ballots are released and the spring bank obviously gone, the long row pretty much straight away afterwards. But the Kilcarran sometimes hang around yeah, for mm -hmm. not long, not yeah. like a minute or two more maybe, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. I never understand I think that. it's just because it is like a newer distillery. It's not, um, you know, it's not got the 200-year history and the sort of real cult following and, 
um, that Springbank does have. Um, it's a sort of relatively newer looking distillery as well. You're right. obviously going to go and visit it later yeah. this afternoon. So yeah. it's not got that kind of oldy worldy mystique that Springbank has, mm-hmm. which I think is all part of the kind of romantic side of and it, romance yeah. around that, that distillery. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely. The quality and the ethos from our side of things, again, is just like oh, comes quality, through. spirit. Yeah. Um, it's the same team that make it. Um, they just down tools at Springbank, apart from the malting. The malting's all year round there. Yeah. Um, but the rest of the team go up to Glengyle normally mid to end of September each year and then make Kilcair until we break up for Christmas. Right. Um, so yeah, That's funny because I think of it as a Christmassy malt as well. Yeah. Mm. Is there a reason that it's made in that no, time? No, and chance? it has changed over the years. I think right, it used okay. to be July, okay. um, but now um, it's towards the end of the year. Um so yeah. Um, now, uh, sorry, am I reading this right? These are both eight-year-old bourbon yeah, matured whiskeys. Yeah. So because I'm one sherry. No. One's, one's bourbon, one's sherry. One's bourbon, one's sherry. Sorry, oh, it says so both are bourbon here. Yeah, okay, the second got, one's sherry. You've got a typo. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, me. sorry. <laughs> this yeah, does not, there's no way this is both bourbon. <laughs> yeah, okay, no. that makes more um, sense. Um, you can even see, uh, you should be able to see actually, they're side by side there, the contrasting oh, yeah, colour. There you go. What sherry. strength is this at? So this one is the... Sherry, I'm sure, is 57.5, or one's 57.5, one is 55.8, I think. Close enough. So they're roughly mm. the same, um, yet to be released um, in the coming weeks. We do every year, though, this eight-year-old cask strength from Kilkerran. So it first was released in 2016 um, and was a bourbon matured. Um, we did one edition each year until... 2022 when we did a split maturation so half was matured fully in port casks yeah. uh, vintage port casks and the other half in sherry oloroso right um, and then this year we're going to continue that so again a return a welcome return i think to the bourbon full maturation and the other half will be sherry matured okay fantastic um, so it's nice to contrast um, i think last year uh, the port kind of i think just because it was newer um lots of people kind of thought the port's the one for me. Um, the sherry, equally though, um, is is very popular. Um, but it's nice. I like the the bourbon. I remember when I first joined, the first sherry edition was one of the the first editions that I had the opportunity to launch as part of the sales team. That was the fifty seven point one percent, really dark, rich, uh, syrupy. It all those kind of like campfire burned marshmallow kind of notes and I loved it Um, and then my colleague at the time was like oh have you tried the bourbon you know it was released like a few couple of years ago but you should try that and I managed to track one bottle down at the Caddenhead shop and I bought it and it's amazing so for me um, the bourbon to come back to that it's really really nice and it's got lots of lovely floral notes kind of we picked up notes like elderflower and heather and Mm. Um, kind of vanilla and custard but then there's a meatiness which comes through in these whiskies as well a kind of really smoky meaty even in the sherries I've had in the past like espresso and kind of coffee notes and things like that so um, and that earthiness too yeah, I've, I've probably been anchored by the tasting that you got down there, but the Iberico ham, though, mm-hmm. I think is absolutely yeah. spot on. That kind I of think, melt in the mouth, fattiness yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. I think in every I one we've had, now, there's actually, been yeah, that. the fattiness of mm-hmm. it, definitely. That's a mm-hmm. good shout, yeah. And also for me with the sherries, um, that kind of campfire toasted marshmallows, each time and time again when we do the tasting notes from one release to the next, um, that sort of comes through. I feel like this is one where if you love the underlying spirit, you're going to love this dram. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think like it really shines through in both expressions. Mm-hmm. You can really taste that. Yeah. I, I also like the fact that you're kind of sticking with two as well. I mean, we had a fight last year. I think I preferred the sherry and you preferred the port, right? Yeah, I preferred yeah. the sherry, I think, but everyone else preferred the port. <laughs> um, I'm not everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, my we'll go for my first controversial opinion of the day. I think this is better than the uh, local barley. Yeah. Which one? This this Kilcarran eight is better than the local. The bourbon than, one. better than the lo- yeah the, the bourbon local but bu- the bourbon Kilcarran cast is better, better than, than this local barley. release local barley. Yeah, maybe yeah, I might agree with that for me mm. at least. Although I'm really enjoying the sherry one, and I'm getting it's funny they use the Iberico ham and the fattiness, but this is more like cooked bacony, mm, mm-hmm, like yeah. really filthy. really meaty yeah, and smoky yeah. and yeah, yeah. I must admit, for me, each year since I've started, usually. 
it's the Kilcaidan cast drink that'll be taken home to, yeah. to pop and, and yeah, drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and like I said, it's just so undervalued. Like, mm. uh, don't get me wrong, Long Row, probably my favourite of the, of the four brands. But yeah, when it comes to value for money, I don't think you can be a good Kilcaidan and a cask strength Kilcaidan like yeah. this. Mm-hmm. lets that sort of spirit shine through. Campbelltown funk all over, right? It's just oh, <laughs> beastly. <laughs> The thing is, what's crazy is that we probably have to pick one of these to get um, one of the Hazel Burns, the local barley, and the Springbank PX. Right. But you will likely be able to be pick able up to over maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, if Maybe we shouldn't cool. air this until we've all got our <laughs> bottles so no one else yeah, <laughs> catches on to the same idea. Yeah, I know, and that's what's nice about it as well, is, you know, it's still there, it's attainable, you can get it for a nice price, you know, yeah. and hopefully that'll continue and Kilcarran generally are you continuing to sort of age it for sort of the younger like I think the eldest I've seen is sort of 14 or 16 yeah 16 so no um I think the idea is that as the distillery gets older and as our stocks are built up to enough to allow us you will look to do to that? have a supply you know okay. as an annual release yeah there's definitely because I just think it works whiskeys. so good like and yeah. this is the thing again you talk about I'm whiskey same, and people are yeah. like, oh it has to be 10 years old blah, blah, blah. like I, no I this actually is don't 8 I'm, years old and it's spot on um, as I say I tend to gravitate towards the younger like the 8 year old cast yeah. strengths for me it's got that power it's like um, really kind of full and bold and flavoursome I really like that um, and it does work well um, so I think there'll be a, a, a range I think we will continue to have Predominantly cast strength as younger, a, a limited edition a annual release. Right, 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 right. Likewise, the heavily peated, you know, for everyone that likes the super heavily peated stuff. And also that works, you know, for us really well as a young whiskey. Again, if you want to. There was to the be five year old that you guys released as one of the virtual days. I mm-hmm. can't remember if it was the 2020 or the 2021. 2020, 2020. There was a five year old. It was my favorite of the yeah, whole lineup. Uh-huh. Oh my God, I got all four. I tried all four. And I think there was even, uh, maybe even like the 20 something year old spring bank in that, yeah, the yeah. Kilkerran mm-hmm. five year old. I was just like this. Yeah. I drank, it went so quickly, <laughs> <laughs> like dangerously quickly. Um, but yeah, yeah. Like, so it, it does does work well, but it works very well. Yeah. There's definitely plans for some um, older expressions, for older expressions as cool. well. Okay, but again, be like everything, when you don't make millions of liters, um, you've got limited stocks. So, um, and I think there were plans to maybe do that more in at neater in the future, but with other things coming up, like our Kilcair and sixteen year olds, something that we want to kind of get out there and have more available as a core product. Mm. So, yeah, maybe we'll postpone plans for older whiskies to allow us to have the stock of yeah. the 16 yeah. for instance for sure um what do we reckon gents which of the two the sherry i'm, I'm leaning towards the sherry person the, i mean they're both very good very, very the, the good. sherry is um pure filth and that's what i love <laughs> about kilkerin it is it's just dirty, dirty. isn't it <laughs> yeah. it's, it feels like I, I i love the bacon that you got but for me i'm gonna go beyond that it's like someone's taken the kind of fat cooking like grease, oil, in, the grease back. In, the pa- in the back of the pan, uh, right? Yes, definitely. Maybe you've even burnt the bacon a little bit. You've got a kind of bit of, yes. bit of, like yeah, kind of black scraping. Yeah, there's definitely that more blackened kind of, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I love how it contrasts to this. Still got the fattiness. It's, it's very clearly the same spirit. Yeah. But mm-hmm. how the casks have really allowed it to grow in two mm. completely different yeah. directions. Getting a bit of like kind of coal gas from it. It's all a bit mm-hmm. like Dickensian workhouse. Yeah, kind of. yeah <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Super oh, industrial. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, oh, I love it. I oh, wish love no, it. Please, please, sir, may I have some more? <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing with this lineup that we're waxing lyrical about the Kilcarran. I think that's just in, it's so incredible. Yeah, that it's, definitely. It yeah. just shows how good it is. Yep. Undervalued, mm-hmm. my guy. Undervalued. <laughs> oh. Here we are. Yeah, that's lovely. So yeah, actually, this afternoon, um, if you don't already get offered, you should definitely ask for a bit of the Kilkerran new make as well, mm, and you can yeah. compare and contrast between the two distilleries. That would be very interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Super good. It's like really nice and light and floral and sweet and fruity. Yeah. So a lot of um, kind of obviously plan planning went into you know Mr. McCarty who was instrumental in getting the distillery up and running and sourcing all of the equipment and sort of preparing the stills to create this particular character the spirit that he had in mind um and i've heard from the very first distillation he was like yep 
that's exactly that's what we it. had yeah that's in mind, cool. so it's all good got it right on the nose first <laughs> time good it. man himself yeah and they're actually interestingly you'll hear all about it but the a lot of the equipment up there some of it's second hand so been in other distilleries whereas a lot of it's purpose built or made for Glengyle um, reopening but the stills were not. The stills came from Ben Wivis Distillery, which had been mm. mothballed as well. Right, um, right, right. And interestingly, Mr. McCarty had started his career at Ben Wivis. Um, so that was the first distillery. So I he, he worked knew in. the equipment well, That's did he? It. That's so and he cool. Knew, he knew that it hadn't been up and running for all that long as a distillery. Right. And had been closed down for a long time. So he knew the fresh. stills were relatively fresh and for just sure. sitting there unused. So he arranged oh. for those to come down to Campbelltown. Um, Lifted off the roof again, yeah. right. uh, put them in, um, and beforehand though they were sort of adapted a little bit to suit to make the style of spirit that he wanted. So okay. the, um, he describes them as being quite angular, so they were kind of softened. The edges were softened to give uh, the spirit a nice kind of flowing journey mm. up, um, and he made the line arm slightly um, ascending as well. Right. So yeah, so they were adapted a sense. little just to suit, but. They came from Ben Wivis distillery. Very interesting. Love a good bit of whiskey history. <laughs> <laughs> Same with our mill. That came from Craig Elihy. I think they'd upgraded and needed a bigger mill. So there was a lovely old Robert Bobby mill there, which I'm All told right. we were able to buy for about one pound just to get a contractual <laughs> agreement yeah, in place. Amazing. I never know if this is like just folklore or if it's actually yeah, true. Yeah. We paid but a punnet of raspberries. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the classic peppercorn. <laughs> 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 Now we're talking, um, let's get into law. Yeah. Right, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, nice. Some, uh, a mixture of old and new equipment. <laughs> so, from those, um, going back to Springbank, obviously finishing with a nice long row, um, mm. which we saved till last because the Kilkerrans actually are malted in the same way for those two. They will have been malted at Springbank as well, our sister distillery, or the sister distillery of Glengyle. So predominantly the maltings for Kilcarran whiskies happens there. Okay. And then the, the barley's just taken along by trailer. And um, what's the sort of, what's roughly, what are we looking at PPM wise? I know PPM, about the same as Springbank, about 10 to 15. So they do the all? same six hours peat smoke um, and then 30 hours. And that means if there's leftover, I suppose it can be used for Springbank right. when they reopen in the new year. That's fascinating. Um, but yeah, nice. like I would have thought it would have been closer to long run. Yeah, yeah I it, agree. It, it tastes it, doesn't mm. it? It's right. really fascinating. Very yeah. interesting. I wonder if it's the age as well, the, the youthfulness. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, yeah. But even the, still, the you younger. compare that yeah, you to yeah, only still. two years older. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look at that, you know, you've got, you've got bourbon to bourbon and sherry to sherry, mm. and they are. Worlds remarkably apart. different worlds in both apart. cases mm -hmm. stills the shape of the stills all these things um, obviously the l less time it's in the cask which is why the heavily peated range which we're not trying to do but um, tastes so good at such a young age because we want to keep all those phenols in there make it as sort of punchy and peaty as possible so they are really great from like you know three to five years old um, matured um, but yeah the the standard core range, so your 12-year-old Kilcair and your 16, your 8-year-old cask strengths, lightly peated. We do an unpeated um, spirit run for about a week each year as well. Um, we haven't released unpeated Kilcair yet, and um, I don't know if there's plans to do so. It also just helps to have, you know, a bank of spirit that can be used for, you know, Campbelltown blends that we make mm, and things like right, that yeah, too. Yeah. Um, and then the heavily peated... Um, which is, I honestly haven't even got a concrete kind of decision or answer on what the PPM of that is. I've heard right. from, you know, like a spring bank, like 40, like a long row, sorry, maybe 40 to 50 up to like 84. Mm. Um, okay. But yeah, um, the long row red, so the long row red, which we're about to try next, is made at Springbank Distillery. It's I've already the, tried it. It's big. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. It's um, <laughs> the more heavily peated range made there. So to produce that in the kiln, we would, our production team would continuously stoke the fire with peat for like 48 hours of drying and smoking. So the PPM rises to between 40 and 50. Um and yeah, long row red for me is also one I would tend to 
yeah, be drawn to each towards, year. Yeah. Oh. This, yeah. this excites me a lot. Like, I, I love Springbank in Port. I think, you know, the Springbank 2020, uh, sorry, the 21 from last year that was, I think, 55% at Sherry, 45% at Port. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. And I've had a couple of other Springbanks that are kind of like, there's a Springbank 14 Portwood from an old, um, like, wood series. Oh, yeah, Absolutely yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, for me as well, long rows, when you have the long row reds, mm -hmm. like I would take a long row red over the 18 or, or yeah, 21 pretty yeah, much I, every day. I personally, it's one um, of my favourites as well. And, and again, there's, you know, age is not necessarily a thing with it. You know, mm -hmm. I was saying last night, you were saying, oh, it's not a proper long row red. But I mean, the, well, the 2020 virtual open day, the one that's, Pino I think, Noir and Pinot Noir and mm -hmm. Malbec combo, yeah. he's mm -hmm. a 10-year-old, just incredible. Yeah. yeah. I so... Um, I don't know if you've heard the story how Long Row Red came about. Have you heard that before? No. 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 Oh, okay. Go on, tell us. So um, here's another story for you. <laughs> so um, Long Row Red it actually kind of was a bit of a fluke. Um, the, obviously, when you're dealing around the world and you've got various importers in different countries and, you know, um, one of them, I think it was in Australia, it was either Australia or New Zealand anyway, our importer there brought it to the sales team attention sales team's attention that there was a, a vineyard out there and there were you know long row wines which I'm sure ah. um, probably maybe even existed for quite a while before that as well but um, they thought it might be some infringement on our trademark or whatever right. um, so brought it to, to our attention um, and contrary to that we were like ah nah it's not you know not a bother um, in that sense but What's their, what's their wine like? Is it quite good? Is it decent? Okay, okay. <laughs> I think I see where um, this is going. And so from that, um, the imported, I think, got everyone liaising. Uh, casks were sent over yep. from Long Row um, Vineyard. And we filled uh, the first casks with Long Row um, into these red wine casks. Um, it worked really well. It was released as a kind of yeah, one-off type yep, thing. Right. Um, but the popularity of it was good so it's now become a more regular thing so we do it every year and um, we like to like the local barley where you kind of have different var varieties of barley different farms being used long row red as well it's always about you know finding different red wine casks in yeah. this edition it's port it's a tawny port um kind of double maturation i would say i can't even really call it a finish when it's been in tawny port for four years but um from Malbec to Pinot Noir to Cabernet Sauvignon, all sorts of um, different red wine casks. And um, that's what makes it quite interesting from one year to the next. Sure. Um, and also kind of getting in, sourcing these casks and kind of making yeah. new friendships. I think recently David Allen, who's the sales and marketing director, um, sourced some from one of our importers, which is in South Africa and kind of had a um, outlet to the um, to a vineyard as well. So yeah, lots of different ways of getting them. Um, but yeah, it's really nice. Long so that's Red is about. one of my favourite so releases right. from Springbank. Mm, it just yeah. never fails to disappoint. It's everything it says on the tin and more. Like, what really more could big, you want? Kind of, big, yeah. yeah. That's that exactly and that's what, that. It's that's what I like as well. So like with the Kilkerran cast strengths as well, the Long Row Red, all these kind of big, powerful younger whiskies it's more more my thing yeah how old is this actually uh, so this one's 11, 11 yeah. yeah so yeah. it was in bourbon for the seven years and then into the 20 port casks for four years after that so, so do you do any of the long row reds exclusive maturation wine not that i'm aware no, of yeah, okay. uh, so far but you know never say never the balance um, is always so good so that's mm. very interesting mm -hmm. that there's yeah. always that initial I, I, I didn't actually realise that. I always assumed it was... Mm -hmm. Like a full match. I never read the bottle. I was just pouring yeah. it in the glass. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's always very well balanced. So that's... Yeah. Yeah, fair play. I have to admit that I don't always love long row in terms of it can be slightly ashy for me. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do get that quite often, I, which actually, I quite I like, like that, but, but yeah. <laughs> but I have... And I'll preface it again with this comment that I like Tawny Port full stop, so I will just drink Tawny Port. For sure. Uh, yeah. um, uh -huh. But together, this is absolute perfection in my eyes. Like, it's this, absolutely yeah. stunning. I think when you've got a smoky whiskey as well, it kind of stands up with that nice kind of rich, kind of more powerful maturation of, like, red wine or sherry as well. The smokiness with it, for me, works quite nicely. 
yeah, this in, in in terms of some like very weird, very specific tasting notes. This this takes me back to my my childhood in a very kind of odd way. Don't worry, Mike wish and, I had your childhood. Yeah, <laughs> Mike, 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 Mike and Linda, right. you weren't you, you, you weren't feeding me longer at age six. Um, <laughs> like we like family holidays we went to to Cornwall. Like uh, we were staying by Padstow. Like we always used to go for like lunch, like at least once on the holiday. At this like pub called the Harlan Inn. Maybe, maybe it exists. Maybe it doesn't Shout exist. Shout to anymore. the Harlan Inn. Shout out to the Harlan Inn from thirty years ago. Um, <laughs> We'll see you there. Uh, and like my granddad would have like a kind of gammon steak, and it's like you got that kind of like gammony, kind of like smoked like ham, kind of like the right. honey on it. Okay. And then they used to like wheel this dessert trolley around, and like you like you have a massive like black forest gasso on it, and it's like a boozy black forest gasso. So it's like all of those things. That's kind interesting of like you say that. I was thinking sticky toffee pudding, almost like chocolate roulade yeah. or there's yeah, a yeah. desserty thing in there's there a for lot of, sure there's a lot of dessert there's a lot of dessert going on we had certainly talked about like dark like fruits black forest gato in, mm. in, in our notes as well yeah it is big it's just big it's everything <laughs> everything and more from Long Row Red I'm falling in love <laughs> turn the cameras off yeah <laughs> that's your review that's it it's everything and I more I should write your tasting that's notes it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I do get the kind of slightly uh, like salty, like kind of sea breeze to it as well. Like oh, uh, going okay. back to the, the the hazel burn as well. Like that's kind of come through. Like again, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not sure I'm getting there, but that's yeah, fair play. That's interesting. I love how people kind of like different, um, you know, tasting the same whiskey, and you all get different notes, different, and yeah. different yeah. experiences from it as well. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. Especially when you're not with somebody who's like, "This is what it is." I know. Yeah. Sorry. And, yeah, and you're okay. like, "Oh yeah, okay. I'm getting this. Yeah. I've had that once or twice. Like, oh, I'm getting this," and they're like, "No, no, that's not in there." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that. At least they're not being suggested to. They're like, no, I refuse to <laughs> no, take these yeah, notes. No, that's so, not in there. Yeah. Mm, okay, then. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm getting paneer or yeah, something. It's like, and if you don't get that, you're wrong. It's like, mm, unsure. Yeah. <laughs> and also in this one, we got in the finish a kind of nuttiness as well developing. Mm, um, yeah. yeah, I get that. I get mm. that. It's that those, walnut. You know what it is? Mm. It's those toasted nuts. When you're abroad, there's guys who have those big Ooh, things yes. of nuts cooking no, on the wait, streets. No, wait. We actually talked about That's that. That's it. We were That's talking exactly about that. That's exactly it. We were. Very good note. We That's were like, it. you know those ones? And I was like, yeah, you get those at the Stockbridge Market. What sort yeah, of nuts those. Are those? Yeah, I don't chest, know, but they make them. No, right? no, no. Or, they're not chestnuts. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't know. In London, you get chestnuts. I think the ones I had were peanuts in the market. It's peanuts and it's something else. It's peanuts and it's another nut. And, and it's like got a sweetness and a kind they're of like sticky, rubbed like in caramelized. toffee or something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's, that's exactly we were talking about. That I, I don't know what nut sellers well, we you get at Weybridge, but like that's not the nut seller. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, you it's rarely like come a, across I, um, these guys. I think it's like, like an Italian or a Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. It's, it's mm -hmm. I, only when I've been overseas have I ever seen yeah. that. But. I've been good so far. I've also had something dirty come into my mind. I'll be. I'll, I'll save that. Well, keep behaving. I'll save that for later. Okay, thank you. This is yeah. This all right. So favorite drams then. Favorite drams. Sorry, Stevie. Nicole, so, what, what, which is your favourite of the six as it stands? I know you're not drinking with us today, as but you've it had stands, the chance. To... I think I would, if I was pushed, long row red. You're right, you're long row throat. But you're, I'm, I'm partial to Kilcair and eight year olds as well. They're dear to my heart. So a close second would be the bourbon. Okay. Kilcair and. <laughs> okay, fair play. Arian? Uh, it's upsetting, but I'm also going to have to go for long row red. Right. That's big from you, my guy. That is big. <laughs> that is big. Because. I'm gonna throw out, and I really like the hazel burn sherry wood as second yeah. place. Mm. So I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back Such to my Such contrasting. They are completely contrasting. Literally two ends of the spectrum. Fair play. Okay, Ian. Yeah. What are we saying? Uh, oh god, I think maybe the hazel, maybe the Kilcarran sherry, and then uh, your close second to the hazel burn sherry as well. Mm. Okay. Um, but the longer I read, I mean, that's what I could have any of these. I wouldn't be disappointed with any oh, of them. Of course not. Don't be silly. Sorry, I'm not saying any of them are bad. But yeah, no, as favourites go. To agree with you, the the long row red, red definitely. I'm very very impressed, surprised, delighted that you've yeah. fallen in love with that so much. <laughs> and I think I'd have to go for the sherry to kill Karen. Next. It's, it's so good. It's, it's really so very, good. very good. Like mm. I just yeah. But see, even, love even, it. even when you get a tasting where you have like six like good whiskies that you really enjoy, like you can often like quite easily differentiate between uh -huh. those six and say like I I would never be disappointed with like number six, but like right. Of them and not not be buying a bottle, but like if a bottle of any of these showed up, I'd not be disappointed oh anyway. God, it's no, very hard. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I would spend a very long time trying to like put them from one to six yeah. very close. But it's just so cool again, like you look at the fact that that local barley, which I would say stands out as kind of the different one in the group, like mm. very far apart. Yep. And then the long red, which is like just absolute, I think you described it best, just absolute filth. <laughs> and they're both from the same place, like beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Very cool. Well, look, yeah. thank you so much for sharing these with us. Not at all. Uh, really, really appreciate it. We've got nice a few drams we'd love to share with you off mm. camera, and you know, we don't want to take up too much of your time. But um, yeah, for everyone joining us at home, I hope you've enjoyed this. We certainly have. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you <laughs> see you so any of these help. on the shelves, definitely buy yourself a bottle. If you see two, send me one. I'll pay for it happily. Um, yeah. Thank nice you. one. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Lovely. Nice your time in Campbelltown. Slancha, guys. Slancha. Cheers. <laughs>